Change is inevitable. A new leader always comes with change. Yeah? For example, Donald Trump, new president of the United States. He brought change. He's going to build a wall. I said right from the beginning, we're going to build a wall. It's going to be a real wall. See that ceiling up there? I mean, this is a wall that if you get up there, you're not coming down very easy. And you know who's going to pay for the wall? Who's going to pay for the wall? Mexico. Who? Mexico. The Mexicans. <laughs> anyway, the point is, whenever there's a new leader, there's change. Yeah? Change in leadership means change in laws. Hi guys, my name is Billy and I'm the administrator at the Father's Love For You, which is an online ministry that focuses on God's love for you. Check us out on social media, check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and yeah. Um, so that's who I am, my name is Billy and uh, that's my dearest assistant, her name is Minnie. Um, you know, she puts the lights and uh, she just prepares all this stuff you see, so yeah, a very important woman in my life. God respect her, God respect her. So, yeah. And so, today's video we're going to look at, um, of course, we're going to look at Jesus, but we're going to start by looking at Melchizedek. Who? Melchizedek. Who? So, if you've never heard of Melchizedek, don't worry about it. Um, He's not a famous Bible character, yeah? He's not like David or Moses or Samson. He's a scarce guy in the Bible, right? I actually believe the only reason he's there is for the Hebrews reference. We're going to look at in Hebrews 7 today. Theologians are split on this subject. Um, they don't know whether he's a real man or he's simply a theophany of Christ. So one thing we can agree on is that he is a type of Christ. There's no doubt about that. So we're going to look at what it means that Christ is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. Um, so when I say Melchizedek is a type of Christ, this simply means that he's an Old Testament picture of Christ. That's all it means. There are other Old Testament pictures of Christ. For example, um, the Ark of the Covenant. Another picture of Christ was when Moses put the snake on a staff. Remember that? And anyone who looked at it got healed of the disease, right? So that it's a picture of Christ. Today, you look to Christ and you get saved. Yeah. So it's a picture. Other pictures of Christ are the lamb being slain. The lamb in the Old Testament being slain. Yeah. Of course, Jesus is not the lamb that's being slain, but it's a picture of what he's going to do in future. It's a picture of Christ anyway. Yeah. So you get it, what pictures are. Anyway, so today we're going to look at Melchizedek. Um, he's a high priest we find in the Old Testament. Um, we see Abraham meeting him once and giving him a tithe once. Um, he only did it once, so it's not a monthly thing he would he didn't keep giving him every every month every 10 percent he gives to melchizedek no all right so the translation of his name means king of righteousness and also the king of peace right First Corinthians one thirty, Christ has become our righteousness, King of righteousness, the King of peace. The Bible calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So you can see the typology here. Verse three says that Melchizedek had no father, no mother, no genealogy, and was there from the beginning of days. He remains a priest forever. Right? Okay, this is basic. You guys do know Jesus is God, right? You guys do know that. He was there from the beginning. Like he did not come into existence after Mary. Jesus was there before Mary. Jesus was there before Abraham. The Bible also says that all things created were created through Christ. Yeah, through him. So Jesus isn't 2,000 years old. He's been there from the beginning. And so that's what uh, Hebrews is reminding us. Then the case is put forward for the next 10 verses that this guy is greater than Levi because Levi's great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, Abraham, 
gave a tithe to this man. Yeah, if the great 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 grandfather did that, then it's as if the great 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 grandson gave the tithe to. In Hebrews, we see this priest being compared against Moses. He's been compared against Abraham, being compared against the saints of old. And here in Hebrews 7, we see him being compared against Levi, the Old Testament priesthood. And they say that he is a greater priest. All right. So we do have a new priest. Now, here is where the problem comes, right? Verse 12. For when the priesthood is changed of necessity, there takes a place a change of law also. For the one concerning whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which none has officiated the altar. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, a tribe with reference to which Moses spoke nothing concerning priests. So something is not right here. The old covenant law demands that the priest comes from the tribe of Levi. Jesus, on the other hand, didn't come from the tribe of Levi, right? He came from the tribe of Judah. And so we already have a problem. The problem is there's a high priest who's not from the tribe of Levi. And that means the laws of Moses are completely useless if you're going to have this guy as your high priest. The laws of Moses, that means the Ten Commandments, the 613 Commandments, those things are put aside. That covenant is put aside. If you're going to have this guy as your high priest, if you're going to have Jesus as your high priest, because he's under the order of Melchizedek, and he's not from the tribe of Levi. So what God is telling us is that we cannot mix the old and the new covenant. To do so would be a serious contradiction. Since our priest is from a different lineage, there is no relationship with the old covenant. And that's why the next verses do say that um, Jesus is the guarantee of a better covenant, right? And so the comparison is given that the former priests on the one hand existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. But Jesus on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore he is able to save those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. And so there is your answer to, is one saved, always saved true, right? Basically what we just read is... Uh, you will be saved as long as Jesus lives. As long as he is alive interceding for you, you will be saved. In the Old Testament, if you had a good priest, Israel was doing good. If the priest died, his son would take over. Now, the problem is the sons were not always good guys. Yeah, There are so many examples in the Old Testament where a good priest died, the sons took over, and things went down. Because God would look at the high priest, he sacrificed, and judging by that, that is how he would treat Israel, right? So if the high priest was just a joker, um, I think it was Eli's sons who were to take over Eli and people were worried because these guys didn't care about the things of God, right? So they knew once Eli died, yeah, we had a problem. But thank God that our priest will never die. There is no replacement of Jesus. He's the best. We have the perfect one. And the good thing about it is he lives forever, right? Remember, he lives forever. And so... He continues to make intercession for you. Now, this does not mean that Jesus is somewhere bringing us a lamb, a sacrifice or anything. No, he is the lamb. He is the sacrifice, right? You do know that, yeah? And just by his existence, that's what saves you. And so it says that he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him. That's me. That's you. To save them forever since he always lives to make intercession for them. The logic behind this thinking is when he dies, then you would have a problem. But uh, guess what? He's never going to die. That's why you cannot lose your salvation. The only time you will lose your salvation is when he ain't living anymore to make intercession for you. All right? So that's why you are saved forever. You are saved as long as Christ lives. So that's it. Celebrate our high priest under the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ. Amen? All right. So that's it from me. That's it from Minnie. And... um. See you guys very soon. Thank you very much. Um, hope it wasn't too complicated. Yeah, I really tried to make it as simple as possible. Yeah, hope it was. If it wasn't, um, I'm sorry.
all right yeah thanks guys i'll see you soon